Hello, welcome to the course UEC001. In the previous module, we discussed about MOSFET and we have started with the D-MOSFET, depletion type of MOSFET, where we have covered its construction and its various characteristics. Now, in this module, let us discuss another type of MOSFET. It is termed as the enhancement MOSFET, that is enhancement metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Okay, so uh, first let us see what is the basic difference between the two uh, MOSFET, whereas it is D MOSFET and E MOSFET. So you can see that in this uh, slide I have mentioned the construction of E MOSFET. Okay, so I have represented over here construction of E MOSFET, where both types N-channel e-MOSFET and P-channel e-MOSFET both have been shown simultaneously for better understanding. So first see the similarities like uh, in case of D-MOSFET it was four terminal device. So here it is also four type but depending upon manufacturer as I have given the statement in the previous case. So it may be possible that the device uh, will be available in the three terminals only if Substrate terminal is internally connected to source, then only source, gate, and drain will be available. Okay, so over here now we can check two end doped regions are there for my N channel of E MOSFET. So these are my N doped regions, and these have been uh, placed at a P type of substrate. So once again, this P substrate is representing the role of the foundation of this E MOSFET. And these are the metallic contacts. These are the metallic contact. So again, you can check source, drain and gate all have been connected through the metallic contact. Whereas the source and drain, these two are in direct contact with the the end type of semiconductor for N channel E MOSFET. So these are the similarities between the construction of D MOSFET as well as in E MOSFET. Now, what is the, in, in fact, one more thing is also there, which is my SiO2 layer. So you can check this SiO2 layer, silicon dioxide layer was present in D MOSFET and it is also available in E MOSFET. And the purpose of this layer is to make my gate terminal isolated from the structure, from the substrate. Okay, so now you can check in case of D MOSFET, there was a dedicated channel between the two end doped regions. However, you can check over here, there is no channel. Okay, so channel is absent, there is no channel. This is the basic difference in the construction of my E MOSFET and D MOSFET. Again, you can check in this P channel E MOSFET, there is no dedicated channel. There is no channel. There is no dedicated channel between two P doped reasons. So likewise, this is my SiO2 layer. These are the metallic contacts. These are the metal contact. And these are the P doped reasons. So this is the structure of P channel E MOSFET. Now let us see the working. Okay, what is the working of E MOSFET enhancement MOSFET? So let us see working of N channel enhancement, or I am writing in short. E MOSFET. So you can recall few steps. Certain steps were there. We will use the same steps over here. Connect my source terminal to ground first. Then as the substrate is not internally connected to the source, so I'm connecting over here to the ground and uh, connecting drain with a battery of a positive voltage.
plus minus VD and this is creating a voltage VDS over here and keeping my drain terminal positive with reference to the source terminal. Okay, so now if you can recall the working of uh, uh, N channel D MOSFET. Initially, we have created a short circuit between gate and source. So if we apply the same practice over here, then what will happen? So you can check if it is connected to uh, the source terminal. Now you can check no current will flow. Okay, means uh, electrons, this end doped region, this will have majority carriers of electrons. This region will have majority carriers of electrons. Drain side terminal is connected to positive terminal of this battery and the source side terminal is connected to the ground and there is no dedicated channel between these two end doped regions. Okay, so no current can flow as there is no closed loop. So here the functionality is different. We have to do something and what to do over here is we have to connect some positive voltage we have to connect some positive voltage between gate and source so i have to connect vgs positive voltage so what will happen with this uh, positive voltage connection so you can check when i am connecting positive voltage over here this is the sio2 layer and this is the p type of substrate so in this p type of semiconductor majority carriers are holes and minority carriers are electrons so as gate terminal is positive, that means toward this layer, near to SiO2 layer, electrons will be attracted. And the concentration of electrons, the concentration of attraction of electrons to this layer will depends upon the magnitude of this external voltage VGS. Okay, so as the magnitude of this VGS is increasing, okay, the electrons will be arrived near to this SiO2 layer and they will create a channel and this is termed as the induced channel and in this induced channel there was the electrons. So now you can check uh, for a sufficient value of this VGS. So there should be some sufficient value in fact in some literature it is mentioned at VGST or VGSTH. Somewhere it is also used as VT. So VT is the threshold voltage or it is VGSTH. Uh, that is the threshold value of this VGH. VGS between voltage between gate and source. So it, it is showing that that a channel is induced. No dedicated channel was there. The channel is induced just because of this voltage and now depending upon the voltage VDS there will be a flow of charge carriers. So charge carrier flow of charge carriers means these electrons will be moving from source to the drain sites and you can check as electrons are flowing from source to the drain sites that means the flow of current will be opposite to that that means this is the drain current. Okay, so the flow of drain current or source current IS will be equals to ID is uh, from drain to source side means the reverse direction and as the input resistance of this particular device is very very high. So just because of this it behaves like an open circuit due to which the typical value of gate current IG will be equals to zero. And what about the holes from this side as this is a positive side the hole will be moving away from this layer. So holes are moving away from the SiO2 layer. Okay, the majority carriers. So this is the method by which means external positive voltage is required. So working of enhancement MOSFET is completely different from that of the depletion MOSFET. Now, in order to calculate the value of VDG, it will be simply vector notations from VD minus VG or we have kept my source as a ground. So we can also write this in terms of VDS minus 
VGS. So over here, my source will treat as a uh, reference or the ground voltage. And the saturated value of uh, VDS, so VDS set, this can be calculated as VGS minus VT. So now depending upon the value of a particular value of VGS, suppose uh, my VGS external voltage VGS is greater than VT. That means there is an assurance that drain current will flow. So I can calculate the saturation point of this voltage VDS. Okay. And for the case, if suppose value of my VGS is less than VT, then what will happen? means this channel is not induced insufficient charge carriers are there and under this situation there will be no drain current that means the value of id equals to 0 milliampere so in order to have the value of drain current one has to ensure that the external voltage required between gate and source terminal should be greater than to the threshold voltage and this threshold voltage is indicating the point that this is a sufficient voltage at which the channel has been induced and through this particular channel the charge carriers can move from source to the drain side okay so this is the working of n channel uh, enhancement mosfet in a similar fashion one can easily understand the working of p channel e mosfet also uh, one more important aspect over here is Shockley's equations cannot be used over here. So Shockley's equation uh, cannot be used uh, as the working is different from that of the D MOSFET or JFET. However, pinch of reason will, will also be there. So I have shown the working with the pinch of reason over here towards the drain sites. The channel having a minute level of depth through which a constant amount of charge carriers can be moved so this is the drain curve okay i have shown vgs equals to vt is a reference voltage just after which there will be a flow of current vgs equals to 3 volt now as you are increasing the value of gate to source voltages the enhanced value of drain current can be achieved and this dotted line is showing the locus of vds saturation so you can check the formula which we have discussed over here vgs set is calculated as vgs minus vt for example if i am assuming that my vt is 2 volts so at this particular layer the value of vgs saturation is 5 minus 2 that means 3 volt so this vds saturation will be hugely depending on the value of vgs okay now so uh, this is my pinch off and this red color line is indicating the depletion reason by knowing the drain curve one can easily draw the respective transfer curve as we have discussed in case of junction field effect transistor so let's see the drain curve and the transfer curve simultaneously So just we have discussed this drain curve, so I am directly plotting it. Suppose this is at VG is equals to 8 volt, 7 volt, 6 volt, 5 volt. 4 volt and just particular line I am drawing over here the initial term for 3 volt also and a threshold reference point just after which the current will start that is my VT equals to 2 volt so this is my VDS these are the typical values of VGS this is in terms of volts and here it is my ID in terms of milliampers. Now, on the basis of this, this is my drain curve. On the basis of this curve, 
I want to plot my transfer curve. I want to plot this my transfer curve. So this is ID in terms of milliampere. Now we have to plot this on various values of gate to source voltage, VGS in terms of volts. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and suppose 8. So you can check VT is 2 volt. That means from 0 to 2, the value of drain current is 0. There is no drain current. And after that, the value of drain current will increase. And at this level, it will be somewhere over here. So I will have this type of curve, which is quite different to that of the transfer curve we have seen for JFET and D MOSFET. So working off enhancement MOSFET is entirely different in comparison to the D MOSFET. So this is my transfer curve and this voltage level, this is my VT. So we can check from 0 to VT value of current ID equals to 0. And when we are increasing the value of VGS beyond this VT, so we can check the value of drain current is increasing. Okay, so this is my transfer and drain curve for N channel MOSFET. And let's see the mathematical representations. If one has to calculate because Shockley's equation is invalid over here, if one wants to calculate the drain current mathematically, then it can be calculated as ID equals to K times of VGS minus VT whole square, where this term K is uh, the constant term. This is a constant term, constant for the MOSFET and for a particular VGS, this can be calculated as, this K can be cal calculated as ID on, that is a corresponding on drain current divided by VGS on minus VT. VT is the threshold voltage, whole square. Okay, so by knowing this value, one can easily calculate the value of ID Okay, so one has to calculate the value of K first. And if somebody want to calculate the value of VDS saturation, so on a particular level of VGS, one can easily calculate it is simply VGS minus VT. So the saturation level of drain to source can be calculated as the value on VGS minus VT. Now let us see the symbolical representation of MOSFET. So similar to the D MOSFET, we will have the symbols of E MOSFET uh, with the consideration with four terminals and three terminals. So separately I am drawing the symbols. drain this is my substrate and the gate so s s is the notation of substrate s is source and g for gate however if we are having only three terminals that means the source and substrates are internally connected so this is my source and this is my gate and drain. So this is N channel E MOSFET and likewise my drain substrate and the source so direction is outward over here for the substrate the current this is drain and source and if only three terminal 
device is being used then gate drain substrate is internally shorted to the source and this is my p channel e mosfet so there is a minute difference between the symbolical representations of e mosfet and d mosfet and the significance is that you can check first thing is there is a isolation between the channel and gate so it has been shown over here now the second thing is you can check drain and source are not dedicatedly connected with the channel so you can check there is a break in this particular bar which is indicated that there is no dedicated channel available between drain and source we can see over here also so these are the symbolical representations of n channel and these are the symbolical representations of p channel okay now let us discuss one example we have to determine the value of drain current if these database have been given vgs the shoulder is given 3 volt id on is given 3 milliampere vgs on is given it is 10 volts we have to find the value of drain current for vgs equals to 5 volts and vgs equals to 10 volts so if you can recall as far as the solution concern if you can recall the mathematical representation we have just discussed we have to first find the constant for mosfet that is k will be equals to id on divided by my vgs on minus vth so i have to find this and vth is given as 3 volt id on is given as 3 milliampere so in fact sorry this is square so it is 3 uh, into 10 raised to power minus 3 divided by vgs on is given as my 10 volt so it is 10 minus 3 whole square so it is 3 into 10 raised to power minus 3 divided by 7 multiplied by 7 so value of k is 0.061 0.061 into 10 raised to power minus 3 amperes per volt square so the unit over here is amperes per volt square it is current and voltage square now we are using uh, the value of k and we can easily determine the value of my drain current id id equals to k times of vgs minus vt whole square so for the first case my id will be equals to 0.061 into 10 to the power minus 3 vgs is my 5 and vth is my 3 volt so 5 minus 3 whole square by solving this i am having an outcome 0.244 milliampere and for the second case where my vgs equals to 10 volts so it is id equals to 0.061 into 10 to the power minus 3 the value of k multiplied by 10 minus 3 whole square and this value is come somewhere near to 3 milli ampere so you can check idea will be clear with this numerical as the value of vgs increases so what we have check this k is constant this vth is constant if value of vgs is increases the corresponding value of drain current also increases which we have discuss in the characteristics also okay we have discussed the transfer curve the impact on increasing of vgs the corresponding drain to source current will be increased okay so this is uh, all about the n channel enhancement mosfet the variation is uh, the working is completely different with the depletion type of mosfet and you can try for p channel mosfet by just changing the notations 
if p channel mosfet and n channel mosfet both have been constructed on a same substrate then this combination is known as the complementary metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor in short it is termed as c mosfet or generally known as the cmos it is having a huge applications nowadays very popular in the fabrications of integrated circuits and very popular in digital uh, communication systems and in digital computers so uh, let us see the basic structure so if you can refer in this construction a common n types substrate was used and this segment is of p channel mosfet however this red color segment is of my n channel mosfet and uh, s2 g2 and d2 these are referring for p channel side and this d1 g1 and s1 these are representing my n channels of sides both have been constructed on a common substrate okay so this is my c mos and now you can check these p plus and p plus are my p doped regions however this dotted segment is the my induced channel which will be created by connecting the external voltage between gate and source okay so uh, this will be available when my device will be on so i have marked over here when it is on that means there will be a creation of induced channel which will have holes similarly to the n channel sides there will be an induced channel when my n channel term is uh on okay so now you can check source s2 so uh, a common output can be taken by combining the drain of both p channel as well as of n channel so i can take output from here a common output n a common input have to be supplied by combining the gate of p channel as well as the n channel so i am having a common gate terminal over which the input is applied and you can check the source of n side is connected to ground whereas the source of p channel is connected to a supply vss okay and this will be a formation of very interesting very important circuit which is known as my cmos inverter which is known as cmos inverter and this is a very interesting logic of digital electronics means if my input is at logic level 1 corresponding output will be at logic 0 so in fact i can rewrite over here if my input is zero so correspondingly my output will be of 1 or in case of input is 1 my output will be of zero so you can check as far as the logic gate concern this will be equivalent to a not gate so we will see in detail how to design a not gate or an inverter with the help of cmos okay and in fact there is a segment of logic families which is completely based on this technology that is cmos technology where we will use this structure in detail thank you